Hello and welcome back to yet another video in our continued journey of trying to master geometry and our today's agenda is going to be working on circles again and learning a very interesting theorem known as the tangent second theorem or the alternate segment theorem but don't get lost in the names the idea is going to be very very easy as usual and based on easier ideas still so let me start uh, with a very basic application of the theorem and then we will try and understand the theorem in detail so this is the story given to us uh, there is a triangle abc inside the circle and there is a tangent cd touching the circle at c and it is given to me that ac is equal to ab or triangle abc is an isosceles triangle and this angle is given as 70 degree and the question is find out angle bcd so first i will start with very very basic triangle properties if these two sides are equal and if this angle is 70 degree this angle is also going to be 70 degrees and if these two angles the sum is 140 degrees this angle plus this angle plus this angle gives me 180 degrees property of a triangle so if this is 140 this angle is going to be 40 degrees this had nothing to do with circles or tangents this was just basic triangle properties once i know this angle i can very quickly say this angle is also going to be 40 degrees essentially i am using the tangent second theorem or the alternate segment theorem to understand the idea the angle created by the tangent and the chord in one segment this is a segment that we are thinking of right now this is the tangent bc is the chord and i am creating this particular angle with the tangent this angle call it x for a second is the same as this angle and this angle is created by the same chord bc in the alternate segment this is one segment on one side so on the alternate side that means the rest of the circle right so the angle created by the chord in the alternate segment is the same as the angle created by the tangent and the chord in the other segment vice versa right so this angle is going to be equal to this angle once i knew this angle i knew this angle was going to be the same using this idea and therefore this is equal to 40 degrees obviously we are not done with this we'll spend 5 minutes to understand why this is working because the moment you see why it is working and how it is connected to previous easier ideas this theorem will become more familiar and useful to you So once again we just want to spend a couple of minutes trying to prove the theorem and again as you prove the theorem you're just spending some couple of extra minutes with the idea making it more accessible to you so again to derive this idea i'll be using a very simple idea that we have discussed and used earlier that the angle created by a segment or let's say a chord on the circumference all of them are equal to each other and they are also half the angle created by the same chord or the segment at the center so we used this idea earlier also to work on some other properties of chords so again the same idea will be in play and let's see how so a new story this time the triangle is not an isosceles triangle our sole focus is on building this connection that if this angle is theta why is this angle theta that is what we want to understand and work out right so let me put a center somewhere a center of the circle and let me draw the radius connecting the points so so let's say this is the center o and now when i create this angle the other basic property that i'm using is that the radius always creates a perpendicular on the tangent that means this whole angle is going to be 90 degrees this whole angle is made up of this angle and this angle so this angle is going to be 90 minus theta i have this as a radius and this is also the radius so in this small triangle they are equal to each other and therefore it becomes an isosceles triangle if this angle is 90 minus theta this angle is also going to be 90 minus theta if these two angles are 90 minus theta their total will be 90 minus theta plus 90 minus theta that will be 180 minus 2 theta if i want to figure out the third angle i should subtract from 180 this the sum of the other two angles so 180 minus 180 will get cancelled and minus minus will become 2 theta so the measure of this particular angle is 2 theta 
once i have this i will use this idea think of the chord again or this particular segment it is subtending an angle of 2 theta at the center so the angle subtended at the circumference anywhere else if this is 2x anywhere else it is x so if this is 2 theta this angle is going to be theta and therefore you have it if this particular angle between the tangent and the chord is theta the angle created by the same chord in the alternate segment is also theta now this is the basic idea and as you saw in the previous example obviously i can throw other geometric properties around it i can make this an isosceles triangle maybe i can throw you a new angle here and create a new question around it but once this basic is in place uh, maybe applying it in tougher problems will not be too much of a challenge so i hope you tried out the question the story of the question seemed very long that this is an in circle inside the triangle touching at points d e f or whatever the names were and then these points are connected and the angles given were 60 degree 70 degree and 50 degree and the question was find the measure of the internal angles of the triangle abc that means this angle this angle and this angle is what you had to figure out so because there are tangents involved and i can almost see here that this angle because this angle is 70 degree this angle is also going to be 70 degree why because this is a chord creating an angle in one segment and the this angle this whole angle is going to be the same as the angle created by this chord in the alter, alternate segment so if this angle is 70 degrees this angle is also 70 degrees right again you can work the same theorem here so if you think of this particular tangent creating a chord uh, creating an angle with this chord again the alternate angle again is 70 degrees so this is also going to be 70 degrees now if i think of the triangle efc this is 70 degrees this is 70 degrees that is 140 degrees total in this triangle is 180 degrees so this angle is going to be 40 degrees and the same idea will play out over and over again if i if i think of this tangent creating an angle with this chord this angle is going to be equal to this angle this chord and this tangent in this segment is this angle in the alternate segment that means the rest of the circle created by this angle is 50 degrees so if this is 50 degrees this is also going to be 50 degrees and again if i think of this tangent creating an angle with this particular chord same story same angle if this angle is 50 degrees this is also 50 degrees if this is 50 degrees and this is 50 degrees 100 degrees this angle is going to be 80 degrees and i hope uh, and then i hope you can apply the same idea leaving that part up to you figure out this angle and this angle and figure out the value of this angle because now you know the logic so slightly bigger application very slightly bigger application of the tangent second theorem you are just applying it a number of times and you just have to tell your orientation to figure out which is the segment and which is the alternate segment which is the chord and the tangent and where is the alternate angle being created and you are done So this was our next question. I hope you tried it by yourself first. And this is the story given to us that PQ is the tangent on the circle, PAB is a second intersecting the circle at A, and it is given to me that PQ is equal to BQ is equal to six. So this is equal to six. I've already marked it so. And the question is, what is the value of AQ? So what is the value of AQ? Let me draw AQ here. when i draw this i have the tangent second theorem in action again because this is a tangent this is a chord inside the circle so the angle created by the tangent and the chord will be mirrored in the alternate segment this is one segment so this will be the alternate segment so angle pqa this angle is equal to this angle right now if i think of the triangle the small triangle apq and the big triangle pbq for a second so let me mark a p q as a triangle if i look at this triangle angle q is ang equal to angle b so if i want to look for similarity angle q is the same as angle b this angle was equal to this angle and angle p is common to both of them that means i have two angles equal 
and therefore similarity kicks in and what is left in the big triangle I have uh, Q left out and now I can straight away go for proportionality of sides so I know AP upon QP AP upon QP is equal to PQ upon PB is equal to AQ upon QB now see what all do you have I have PQ I have PQ and I have PB also so instead of PQ I can write 6 and instead of PB I can write 9 what do I want I want AQ and do I have BQ or QB yes I also have this I just have to cross multiply now and I can find the value of AQ so interesting question first use of the tangent second theorem to create this angle and this angle and then using similarity to connect the measure of sides so I hope this most of this makes sense so this is our next question this is the figure given to us that the two circles are touching at point P it was also given to me that AC upon BD AC upon BD is 2 is to 5 and the question is what is PA into PB upon PC into PD so once again if you just draw a tangent here life will become very very easy and different and now if I think of the small circle this tangent is creating this angle with this chord AP inside the small circle so this angle will be equal to any other angle created by the same chord in the alternate segment and this is that angle this is one segment and this is the alternate segment this is the chord this is the angle with the tangent and this is the alternate angle right so if this angle is x this angle is also going to be x and now apply the same idea for the bigger circle think of this chord BP inside this big circle again X is the angle created by the tangent and the chord in this particular segment this angle will be equal to this angle because this angle is also created by the same chord in the alternate segment so using the tangent second theorem or the alternate segment theorem this angle will be equal to this angle and therefore if I am calling this angle as X this angle will also be X now change your orientation and think of this angle call it Y for a second let's say this is the angle between the tangent uh, whatever the name of the tangent is and the chord PC thinking of the small circle so this chord PC is creating this particular angle in the alternate segment this is one segment this is the tangent this is the chord this angle is Y this angle is also going to be Y because this angle is also created by the same chord which is intersecting with the tangent right and in the alternate segment and again think of the big chord DP for the bigger circle the angle is still Y so this angle is also going to be equal to this angle because this big chord is subtending angle is subtending this angle and I know this angle and these uh, and I know this angle is equal to this angle because of the alternate segment theorem and the proof right and now if I think of triangles let's say triangle PAC and I want to think of similarities so angle P is common to this small triangle as well as the big triangle PBD so P corresponds to P right and then angle PAC or angle A corresponds to angle B so instead of A I will write a B C corresponds to D so I will write a D very easy similarity match so now I will go for the proportionality PA upon PB PA upon PB is equal to AC upon BD is equal to AC upon BD is equal to PC upon BD is equal to PC upon PD now in this story I have AC and BD I have AC as 2 and BD as 5 already now using this I can figure out this that should not be too much of a challenge so another maybe perhaps scary looking diagram but once you spot the tangent and the chord interaction after that is just a very series of very easy steps okay actually we are not fully done because we had to figure out this PA into PB PA into PB upon PC into PD right 
so what do i know i know pa upon pb is equal to 2 is to 5 that means the ratio of pa is to pb is 2 is to 5 when i have a ratio i know nothing about the numbers but i can say the numbers are let's say 2k and 5k so now i will say okay pa is 2k and pb is 5k because all all i know is that the ratio is the same if i knew one of the values i could have figured out the other but i don't know either similarly if i think of pc upon pd i have the same ratio pc is to pd is also 2 is to 5 but k is already used up so i will say okay this is 2q and 5q now use this data here pa is 2k pb is 5k okay no problem pc is 2q and pd is 5q so i get uh, the 22 will get cancelled the 55 will get cancelled but i'll still be left with but i will still be left with k square and q square i know nothing about k and q so if the question is this particular data my answer is cannot be determined but that that is again nothing to do with the tangent second theorem this is now actually a basic ratios questions and can you come to the point that you say ki no i cannot get a specific data answer here but our main agenda was trying to understand the application of the tangent second theorem that how this angle is equal to this angle or this angle and from the other side as well